And today it's going to be about uh, finding your golden thread in your career carpet. So I'm Jim, the Weaver Fertile, uh, and welcome everybody. Uh, Javon Morris and Jennifer Wigeman, workshop facilitators, will be in here as well. And uh, they'll be monitoring the chat room with me. And let me just, some of you may be new or did recognize names uh, as you came in, uh, but for the new people, uh, WorkNet DuPage is funded by the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, the WIOA grant. Uh, we do a virtual job club. We are on a holiday schedule. I will give you uh, the list of those at the end. Uh, we do job search workshops for people who qualify for the program. Because we are grant funded, you do have to go to our website, WorkNet DuPage, uh, and fill out the questionnaire. Uh, but you can also attend the layoff to launch workshop every Tuesday. Uh, you can go to the get started form at WorkNet DuPage to initiate the process. And, uh, and the question is, if you haven't heard from your wheel, a case manager in six months, do you have to apply again? Well, contact your case manager, Lucille if you know who that is. Uh, you, if, if you haven't heard and you haven't contacted them, because part of the, of the requirement is that uh, you uh, maintain monthly contact. So check with your counselor if you already have one. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you don't have a counselor, haven't filled out an application, the lay layoff to work, uh, layoff to launch workshop is every Tuesday at 9.30. Uh, you can sign up at the uh, worknet2page.org launch. So again, every Tuesday at 9.30, worknet2page.org launch, if you are new. Uh, it will tell you how you can qualify, uh, or you may qualify for grants up to $10,000 to upgrade your skills continue to receive unemployment and no need to pay it back. But the details will be in that uh, workshop. Uh, with Zoom, as always, please be polite and courteous. Uh, respect everyone's views. Uh, no need to be uh, hostile or curt. Uh, no objectionable language. Uh, please use the chat function. Uh, for questions, I will be looking over periodically. Please mute all your uh, microphones. And the whole purpose of this is to have a positive experience for everyone. I hope you learned something today. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about was very important for me uh, when I was in the middle of, uh, I don't know, seven layoffs and seven years and several career changes. So I hope what I present today uh, is good for you. Okay. Uh, I am going to uh, add some things here, I hope. If not, there's supposed to be a way for me to add some things. Do, do, do. Well, I tell you what, uh, at the end of this, I'm going to put a copy of the recordings in, as well as worksheets to help you write out your stories, plus a bibliography of just some recommended resources and some websites to research yourself. Okay, so we are recording right now, and let us begin. So finding the golden thread. Again, my name is Jim Fergal. Uh, this all had a, an experience uh, to me. Uh, one night, my wife. One day, my wife and I were were going to ride to work. Uh, she's opening up the garage door. I happened to see a fly on the garage door, and I was intently watching this fly 
to see if it was going to ride up the garage door. And next thing I know, I bang my head into the door. Uh, and I was like, wow, what happened? So a little vision that I had. And part of this is from, uh, I was reading, looking at uh, 1001 Arabian Nights. And then I also uh, was at a career conference when one of the counselors was talking about uh, we all have our rugs, and uh, every once in a while, our rug gets torn apart, and we have to reorganize it. So, <clears throat> you know, here I was on my own flying carpet around Chicago, and suddenly this storm comes up, right, just tearing everything apart. And I'm going to make this very relevant to today. We're going to call it the year 2020. Anything bizarre is happening, Every anything and everything. As a matter of fact, I was showing one of the counselors this, and uh, she says uh, she worked with us. She went away for a while, worked somewhere else. She said even when she went somewhere else, she would watch the Halloween presentations because it was consistency. So in this crazy year, I want to be consistent and still did the Halloween presentation for you. So you have a lot of disruptions and distractions, everything from the pandemic to people losing their jobs to lockdowns, and then we're not locked down, and then we're locked down. Uh, you have life. Those of you who have uh, children or grandchildren that you're Zoom learning at home, uh, and then that's just life in general. So these are all these little creatures that are attacking you and attacking your rug. And... Uh, you know, mine got ripped to shreds many a time. So one of the times I was sitting there in the trash heap and I found this magic lamp and just, you know, said, well, come on, I'll, I'll rub it and see what happens. Well, a genie appeared. And, uh, you know, this genie, you know, there's good and bad genies, uh, was not a good genie and didn't allow me my three wishes. This genie said, I was going to have to work to find my rug and put it back together. So he took me to my own personal castle, and each of us has our own inner castle. And uh, the question he asked me was, what do you seek? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Uh, I just want a job. I want to do... It could be anywhere, or I just want to be doing something, just anything, uh, you know, just hire me and I can figure out the job and I'll do it. Uh, all I want is this. I want security, I want a career, I want a job with benefits, right? Isn't this what all of us say? And this is what everyone says. Now I found uh, during my, certainly during all my transitions, and I'm sure some of you are finding this, you're kind of in this job search maze of chaos. Uh, not only do you have everything I've talked about as far as the pandemic and lockdowns and job search and trying to figure out what you want to do. Uh, and this is like a hallway of mirrors. And there's lack of focus. You're trying to figure out self-assessment. Uh, before the pandemic, there was little contact. And even now, you feel like there's no contact because we're more isolated, although we're all on Zoom, right? We're definitely hitting more and more online applications. Uh, we, there's competition. Uh, you're trying to be the perfect candidate. And now there's video interviews and assessments and Skype and Zoom interviews. And I don't know about you, but I feel like the headless horseman running around in that maze. You know, I, I just give me my head back. I want to put it on right. So there's all these disruptions and jolts in life and career. Uh, there's collisions. Uh, 
that cause you to shift your course. Yeah, and th th these life events, these things that happen is you feel like you're on track, everything's going okay, and boom, something sideswipes you and you're off course. So <clears throat> it reminds me of, <laughs> I date myself because I have a collection over a thousand uh, LP records. And those of you who go back in the day know what records are. You know, when you had a skip and no matter how much you tried to get rid of that skip, it was there. And then after a while, that skip keeps going, right? And eventually you got used to that skip in the music. And then when you hear it normally on someone else's record player or whatever, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't, you know, because you got used to the change. Uh, one of the things is wherever there's chaos, disorder, we're trying to make order out of this. Uh, and I found this, this, this was very interesting. I don't know where this is from. Uh, this is all threads going in to make a rug. Interesting, isn't it? So it looked very chaotic, but each of those strings had a certain place it had to go uh, into the loom here. And then it's coming out as a rug. Now, we all like life to be very easy. Uh, you know, why do we have to go through these dark periods of time? Why do we have to go through the layoff and things like that? And this Maya Lin, I, I thought this was very uh, interesting. In order to fly, we have to have resistance. And, you know, whenever I watch a World War II uh, documentary, you know, they talk about bringing the carrier into the wind so that the planes can take off because they need resistance. And we need resistance in our life in order to grow. I mean, if we didn't have resistance, I don't know if we'd ever develop out of our baby stage, right? I mean, think about an oyster, you know, and that pearl. The pearl is a, a piece of sand and it grates. And, and uh, that pearl is actually the uh, biography of that uh, 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 oyster. Now, I don't know about you, but certainly I've had this going on. Uh, career indecision. And these are all things that are up inside my head. Wow, I should have taken that other job. I want a permanent job. My friends and family and parents say I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't like to be laid off. You know, I don't certainly don't want to be laid off again. You know, and you're trying to predict the future. But, you know, there's also the cocoon time. Uh, it's this in-between time hope between holding on and letting go. And we don't like it uh, because there's so much uncertainty in there. But you also have to look at what's happening in the cocoon. Well, one, you've withdrawn from society. And, I mean, think about it. You've been cut off from everything you know. Uh, daily schedules. You used to have a schedule going to work. You got up at a certain time. You knew which expressway and how much traffic there was going to be generally. Uh, you spent so much time at work and then you came home and you're spending more of your waking hours at work with people who are strangers than with your family. You probably knew more about the strangers, your coworkers, than you did about <laughs> your family sometimes. Uh, but they also say cocooning because we want to withdraw into our cocoon is actually fear taking over. You want to protect yourself. Uh, there is many a morning, and there are still many a mornings where you just want to, I just want to cover up, you know, pull the blankets up, hide my head under the pillow and not face reality. But eventually you got to get out of bed. And here's what's happening in this cocoon. It's, this is a time of preparation, a time of testing, and a time of purification. Preparation is you're being prepared for your next phase. I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. Uh, but what I've learned is that everything that I am using today, all my skills and talents and experiences that I have learned in the past, experienced in the past, 
is being applied today. Uh, my seven years of wandering in the desert of uh, career and job search uh, prepared me to do this presentation today. Now at the time, I didn't think so. At the time, the one thing I told my wife was, especially uh, when I was getting out of the army, uh, it was devastating. Uh, I got passed over to major, uh, major board. They were cutting officers. And I looked at my wife, I said, there's gotta be a reason for this. There, something is going to come of this. And that started me on this journey. Actually it was 10 years if I count that. Uh, so kind of like Ulysses or Odysseus, 10 year odyssey, wandering around trying to get home. There's also a lot of testing going on. You know, you're going for interviews, uh, you get jobs, you lose jobs, you know, all this stuff is happening. Uh, and you're being tested to find out who you really are. And, and sometimes uh, you don't always like uh, that person who comes out, they call it the shadow self. Uh, I remember uh, being in a job club and one of the presenters said that after job club, go home, apologize to your spouse, significant other, the kids and the dog, uh, because we're emotional during job search. And our shadow self, our negative self is really lying close to the surface. And the final thing is purification. And what happens is there's a refinement of job search techniques. A lot of people come in here with old style resumes. They don't know about applicant tracking systems because they haven't looked for a job in 20, 30, one guy, 40 years. Uh, you know, so it's overwhelming. So you have to get rid of the old knowledge and it's kind of like metal. Uh, you melt the metal and the scum rises to this top that's called slate, uh, slag. And then you scrape that off so that you have pure metal to pour into the mold. So here we are, we have to find our identity. Who are you? Isn't, isn't that the question we all ask all the time? Who are we? And so we have to reweave your carpet, okay? It's been torn apart, go back, reweave it. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've learned more about making carpets uh, than ever I thought I would. And if I can make an analogy here, uh, the loom, the framework of the loom is kind of like your life. You know, this is the framework that you have to work in. This is your life, your experiences. It's no one else's. So there's different looms for different size rugs. And it's the same thing. Each of you is an individual. Okay. Each of you is an individual. So you have your own personal loom. Now, uh, when I came back to the States, I took a job selling insurance. And uh, when I saw that was going south, I paid a career counselor for guidance. Uh, I thought the career counselor was going to be mystical and provide me with, this is what you're supposed to do. And she didn't. I had to do the work. And this, uh, this you'll either find this exercise in What Calls Your Parachute, or sometimes you can find it as a simple book, uh, The New Quick Job Hunting Map, Map by Richard Nelson Bowles. They, a lot of times they call it the flower exercise. And you go back and do your whole work history. Uh, you know, your whole environment from the time you were born, what happened every five or 10 years, uh, the narratives, uh, things like that. So uh, you can go to uh, Half Price Books and probably find it. You can go to your library and get that. I will be sending you all this information. Uh, I will be putting it in the chat room at the end of the presentation and we will be sending it out as well. So now what I found 
as I was watching some of these videos, is there is a main thread. It's called the warp, okay? And it zigzags back and forth between these different posts. And because this, the one I was looking at was fabric. Uh, she was constantly tying knots into the fabric uh, to make it one long continuous uh, warp. And when I thought about this, uh, and I had attended seminars on this in the past, um, these knots are called uh, significant emotional experiences, Cs. These are events that changed you. Uh, it could be when you got your driver's license. It could be maybe when you graduate high school, maybe you went into the military. You know, I had a choice of the military, volunteering, being drafted, going to college, playing football, or just picking up a trade and risking the draft. So that's a huge decision point for me. Uh, you know, getting married, having kids, those are all significant emotional experiences. Getting passed over in the military, getting laid off from jobs. Uh, you know, all of this is branded into my psyche. It's all part of who Jim is. And it's the same for you. Each of you has your own experiences. Where you went to school, who your friends were. Uh, you know, th these are all part of who you are. Now, so you got the, the, the warp zigzagging, okay? And, but you have all the rest of the yarn or strings, which are called wefts, and they go the other way. And these, these are the colors uh, and, the, and, you know, it's your interests, it's values, uh, talents, personality, education, all of this are the wefts of your life. So here's some career questions uh, that, that as you're reweaving re your rug, uh, again, you can find this in uh, What Calls Your Parachute. There's three main areas, uh, agriculture, manufacturing, information, and services. We were very much an agricultural agrarian type of uh, culture, uh, but now I think there's only 5% of the economy is really farmers. So around Chicago and definitely DuPage County, if you see a farm in DuPage County, I think there's only one or two left and there's a horse farm that I know of. Uh, but if you go into the middle of the state or go out to Nebraska, agriculture is very big. Manufacturing, uh, believe it or not, is significant in DuPage County. Uh, I went to choose DuPage is the, uh, uh, I guess, Chamber of Commerce for DuPage County. And they put out a quarterly report about different manufacturers uh, that are staying in DuPage County. It's amazing, isn't it? But we've also moved to more of an information and service economy. Uh, especially with technology. Uh, a lot of uh, the people that we serve are, are in information technology or the service industry. So part of the exercise is going to be writing out your stories, but you want to identify, do you like working with things, people, or data? And each of these can be applied to agriculture, manufacturing, or information. So uh, someone I knew, a trainer that used to work for me, his family owned a big farm in Iowa. Now on that farm, you know, me typically see someone in a straw hat, uh, blue jeans, you know, bib overalls, uh, you know, the stereotypical farmer. But as uh, I've been to different farms, I found out there's tractors, there's animals, uh, you have to, uh, you know, you know, uh, heart, you know, the crop, you have to plant the crops, you have to till the soil, there's minerals and things like this. Uh, but there's also data. Uh, now they have GPSs on the tractors. Uh, there are now uh, 
information technology. They're coming up with these little nano nano computers that they can spread into the soil and look at the mineral content and the yield of the crops. So now not only do uh, farmers have um, mineral rights and water rights, they now have information rights. Uh, so that's kind of interesting with data. And of course, you know, to buy the tractors, to fix the tractors, uh, to cattle and things like that, you have to talk with people. You know, I, I remember going up to a farm up in Minnesota with uh, my neighbor from Germany and the relative, you know, every morning, stock market, you know, you know, what's the price of cattle, pigs, you know, pork rinds, all this stuff. And I'm like, what? I never would have thought that. You know, because my stereotypical idea was wrong. Fields of knowledge. You know, what are you interested in? You know, it's amazing that if you figure out what you're interested in, uh, you become like a sponge, you know, and what you're interested in and your value system, uh, when these all tie up, you know, you, you stand greater job satisfaction and job success. Now, one of the things I ran across also was passion. Do you have passion for something? And where does that come from? I used to think you had to be born with passion. You had to figure out your one life, things like that. Nah. I think what happens is you have different experiences. Uh, you start getting a taste of something. Uh, could be technology, it could be working with people, it could be uh, healthcare, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, wow, this is interesting. And, and then you start researching more and then you start getting some temp jobs or volunteering, you're learning more and more and suddenly you're passionate about something. So I think it's developed over time, my opinion. Now, there's different preparation times. I was going over uh, a resume for a truck driver yesterday, get a CDLA license. You're looking about, I'm going to say eight to 12 weeks, depending, you know, and then you have to get all the licenses and the endorsements. On the other hand, I have a friend who's a neurosurgeon and I know for sure the neurosurgeon does not take 12 weeks. He had to go to school, then he went to med school, then he had to do his internships, uh, and, and then he had a practice, you know, all these years. So there's different preparations times. And one of the books uh, that I ran across says, you know, you can be anything you want. No, it's any, the guy rephrases it, you can be anything you're capable of being. So I thought, well, okay, because I, I know I can't be a neurosurgeon right now. And actually, I don't even know if I'd want to because that's not my interest. I don't read medical stuff. Uh, there's different kinds of workplaces. Uh, we're definitely, our whole idea of workplace has changed since March. I never thought I'd be doing Zoom workshops. I never thought I'd be doing resumes on Zoom. I'm sure a lot of you uh, that have kids never thought you'd have Zoom education. Uh, Zoom interviews or Skype interviews were just coming into the forefront. And all of a sudden, boom, here we are remote. But also, you know, I've had uh, repair work done in the house. Uh, they're inside, outside, either electricians or concrete work. Uh, you have people that want to drive trucks. They want to be uh, over the road. You have nurses. Uh, or healthcare workers. Uh, they're either uh, working inside a clinic or a hospital or home health care now. So you see there's a lot of different workplaces. Forest preserve. Sounds nice working out in nature. As I talk with several people who do that, they say it's great until it's 30 below zero or 110 degrees. I said, well, yeah. Then finally prescribed or discretionary. Uh, prescribed is where it's very detailed. I remember working in, a, it tells you what to do. I remember working in a factory uh, and I was on assembly line uh, putting caps on aerosol cans. That was my whole job for eight hours. 
dunk, dunk, dunk. Nothing was going to change for eight hours other than taking a, a, a break. Eight hours, eight hours. Uh, discretionary is where, like now, I make up what my day is. I know there's certain things I do. Uh, I can schedule when I do resumes. I can schedule when I do workshops. Uh, certain meetings come up, but I, I get to plan my day. That's what discretionary is. So discovering your stories is asking yourself questions. You can do this for uh, your work, uh, but what color your parachute has you look at seven or eight accomplishments throughout your life. And then you, uh, there's skill sets for people, places, things, whatever, data, information. And then what you do is it tells you the skill and there's like seven boxes underneath and you check the box of the story that that skill was used in. I will tell you that I found my top 10 skills and that turned out to be my thread. So that when I evaluate uh, a position, I'm looking at, am I gonna be using my top 10 skills? So inside your castle, as you're trying to put together your, your rug, you're going into these hallways of memories, experiences, opportunities. Uh, sometimes doors didn't open for you. And you know, that door wasn't yours to begin with. Uh, but we do have in each room uh, great experiences and some bad experiences. So writing out your stories, uh, and this will be in one of the attachments. You want the situation, what's the background? Why did you become involved? What was the problem, the challenge you faced? What actions, step-by-step -step details, obstacles, tools, people, locations, how did it turn out? What did you like, dislike about the people you worked with, the organization, uh, and lessons learned? So I was working with someone, uh, and he's on, Jerry, uh, and we were talking about writing out your stories. And if you don't mind, I'm going to read one of his stories because I gave him the SPART outline. Uh, situation, problem, action, results, and tie-in. So his spurt is um, he, he took a, we, we took a job description and one of the things in here was uh, creating a 5G task list, all righty. The situation was he was a senior engineering specialist at Nokia. He was part of the operations team supporting software test and validation in the field. Team responsibilities include log, a collection, troubleshooting, database implementation, patch installations, and networking. So all you Alcatel, Lucent, Nokia people know what's going on. The problem was requests for operation support came from many sources. Verbal, over the conference bridge, email, messaging. There were so many operators available. There were only so many operators available. And at times, there were a lot of software issues. The team was being overwhelmed with requests. You know, think about this. Everyone's calling, and it's just all in your head, and you're getting stressed out. The actions was Jerry decided uh, that we needed a way to track all of these requests. So he created a task list. It was a shared list, so all operators had access and could edit the list. It included the assigned persons person or persons, a description of the task and its current status. The result was this allowed us to improve the quality of support. It provided transparency, so everyone knew what was going on at any given time. It also provided a means to share what we were doing during the day uh, and in the end of shift report. Tie-in was it required the knowledge and the use of communication skills, focus under pressure, collaboration, self-motivation, and initiative. So he wrote out several of these stories. And uh, when, when I uh, was talking with him, as we were talking about the stories, other pieces of the story was coming together. 
which brings us to self-awareness, okay? You start finding uh, this thread that goes through. And these stories all are different patterns in your rugs. You know, Jerry has his pattern, his rug. Uh, Lucy, Lucille, you have yours, all right? Uh, Martin, you have yours. Everyone has different rugs and different patterns and different colors. So career success is discover your personality, your interests, and your values. So I, I found this uh, blog. It has 14 free personality assessments. This is uh, included in the presentation that we'll, I'm hoping to get in the chat room. Uh, as far as determining your strengths and skills, you can go to ONET online, uh, the Career One Stop, Strength Finders. You have to buy the book or you can pay to take the test online. Uh, there's Mind Tools, Pymetrics are different exercises used by companies. There's predictive analysis. Uh, so there's predictive performance analysis, uh, which is used by employers. But these are ones generally for you to look at, uh, to assess yourself. Uh, because as I was going through this, and definitely as I've uh, talked with job seekers, uh, especially with the personality, they expect the personality to say, oh, this is gonna define what I'm supposed to do. Eh. You're looking for consistency in the different assessments, and you're looking for uh, consistency in skill sets. What have you used over and over? Because those are clues uh, to provide you with direction for the future. Now, in every one of your rooms, you got to clean out the negative, you know? And why is it when you're depressed and stressed, you always focus on the negative, right? I can think of my screw ups and I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did that. But I also found that I have to accept my rewards and my treasures, the experiences I learned. Uh, I just reconnected with some of my uh, <laughs> troops, soldiers that uh, you know were in my uh, platoon uh, that reached out to me and uh, we talked and it's very interesting. It was the reward of talking with them after all these years of reconnecting. You know, there's no value on that. You can't place one, but this is, you know, I get rid of the negative, but focus on the positive. Tell your story to people uh, before the interview, uh, get feedback. You know, uh, a lot of you uh, have been, you know, might meet if there's restaurants are ever open again. Uh, Tell a story to people, or you can do it on a Zoom call or something uh, because you want to talk it out. Because as you talk it out, you start saying, oh, I forgot about this. I forgot about that. And people can also give you feedback on your strengths. The other thing is let your story come alive. Uh, I have been amazed, uh, and this is why I like Zoom, uh, for me to write a... I was reviewing resumes initially, just reading them and writing them, uh, writing comments back. And I said, you know, I'm going to try this on Zoom. And what I like is that I get to see you. I get to see your energy as you're telling your story. You see, and as you tell your stories, this makes you memorable. You know, Jerry, I got five stories here about Jerry. Uh, there's other people. Uh, you know, I remember stories of people from, I've been doing this for 25 years here. From 20, 25 years ago, I remember people's stories. There's a guy who just came in uh, and I remember him. He, he was looking for me and I remember him from 20 years ago. I said, I know him. And I started telling the story to Javon and Jennifer. I said, I know who this person is. How do you remember? Well, because he made himself memorable. You also may find that your rugs, you know, the jobs and careers, maybe they were harmful. Maybe they were moldy, frayed, old. Maybe you don't want to do that anymore. Maybe you want to find some new interests in, in your career. 
there was times when I would get bored when we were co-located at the unemployment office. I said, oh gosh, it's a horrible job, especially if I if job seeker was yelling at me. And my former uh, uh, supervisor at unemployment says, whenever you're in doubt about your job, just look down to the line standing at unemployment. And I said, yeah, okay. So I started looking, and, and this is what you have to do sometimes, is look in your career, look in your job. If you're getting bored or dissatisfied, find something that, you know, maybe this needs to be tweaked. It, you know, uh, I had knee surgery and came back, and that week that I came back was, oh, by the way, Jim, you have to learn to record on the PowerPoint and put the boot camp online. I'd never done that. And next thing I know, I'm learning new technology. I was the first in the organization to try Zoom. Uh, we pushed it. I wanted to get the, the virtual job club up and running probably in three weeks. I learned three new technologies in two weeks. You see, so it gives you energy. So when you're in that new position, if you feel like it's getting moldy, stale, uh, look for other things to do. Volunteer, ask for help, ask to help other people. Whom do I serve? This is a question that the Grail Knights uh, had to answer uh, in order to get to the, the Grail. And because ultimately we serve, uh, we go through different, as we mature, you know, we were all very self-focused uh, as babies, you know, it's all about the, you know, me. Uh, then eventually you start integrating into society and trying to conform to society. And then you hit what they call a uh, community and you wanna give back to the community. Uh, those of you who are over, uh, well, let's just say the Renaissance workers who have a lot of experience, on core.org, they talk about an ARP, talk about people finding their second or third careers later in life, because who do you serve? Because when you find that, there, it's like a mystical, magical moment. And when you're doing what you're found to do, it's like these epiphanies, uh, you're in the zone. It's a meeting of uh, past, present, and future. And that's the other thing I would recommend is look for these moments of time where you're standing there uh, or you're working on something and you know two hours have gone by and you, you say, I can't believe they're paying me to do this. This is fun. Your warp thread is your golden thread, okay? This is what drives you. This is what makes you. This is the foundation for your rug. And when you can see that thread, it's like enlightenment and you become a soul of fire. Everyone longs to be awakened, to be more true to themselves. You got new reborn energy. You know, so you wanna look at what do you have to offer an employer? Uh, how are you gonna serve the employer, serve the customer, serve the community, serve the world? Some of you I know have patents and those patents that you, you, know, that you developed have made our life easier, okay? So you might be working for a company, a technology company. Uh, look at the ones who are trying to develop the uh, vac vaccine right now. Y you know, they're saying, well, we're working on this vaccine uh, because we got to get it done for the company, but it's also for the world. So it's not just about you doing a job, but you have to look at how does your position, how do your talents and skills ripple out to affect others, coworkers, customers, and eventually the world. All of you have, I don't care whether you're a receptionist, warehouse worker, uh, uh, accounts receivable, uh, a manager, vice president, CEO, you, your actions affect a lot of people. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you were found out what you're supposed to do, like Mark Twain. It's illuminating, unbelievable. 
I remember writing my football coach uh, from college a few years ago. Uh, and I said, wow, you know, I, I finally figured out this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And he says, yeah, isn't it fun when you finally realize what you're supposed to do? And I know for a lot of you, you're in the forest right now. It's hard to see that. But I offer you this presentation as a way to start identifying your warp thread. What motivates you? What drives you? What are your skills? What do you have to offer? And then reweave your rug. You see, because each of you has your own magic carpet. Each, each of you is an individual. Each of you have different talents. And uh, I, I don't care if I have uh, three software engineers in a row. Each of the software engineers is different and they approach problems differently. Different personalities. So as I get back on my rug and I'm flying around, you know, the past was brutal, okay? And I'm sure there's gonna be times in the future that are gonna be brutal. But if I look at the past, I say, thanks for all the lessons. And dear future, I am ready, okay? This is just one of those significant emotional experiences for you. This is another knot in your warp to connect your, your thread, if you will, of your career and life. So here's some of the books. What Color Is Your Parachute by Richard Nelson Bowles. Uh, the New Quick Job Hunting Map. Uh, Finding, Find Your Fit by Sue Caden. Uh, has a list of assessments in, in the back. Uh, Discover Your True North by Ann Bruce. Whistle While You Work, uh, Richard Leader, David Shapiro, Now Discover Your Works, Marcus Buckingham, and Donald Clifton. It's uh, from Gallup. I could have had 50 books on here, but I figured I'd narrow it down to these because, the, you know, there's Barbara Sher, Marcia Senatar. There's all sorts of books. But I would say if you're going to start, uh, probably up here with these two. Richard Leader is more about what you're calling. Strengths helps you identify. And of course, we have all those websites as well. So if you have any comments or questions, put them in the... Uh, uh, resource room here. Uh, I am wondering why I can't put anyone in here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Contact her directly, okay. okay. Well, yes, there is a lot to think about, a lot to act upon, uh, Stacy. So believe me, I cut this down a lot because I didn't want to overwhelm you all. <laughs> uh, there is a lot to act act upon. But you have your time and I would schedule your day. Uh, schedule your day to take time for you because to reacquaint yourself. Amy asks, uh, they say it's better to find people than jobs. What would be your approach to this? It is better to find people. Uh, I was just talking with someone uh, this week maybe it was Jerry, uh, that actually had a, applied at a company but had a friend inside the company. And there's someone else, another job seeker too, who uh, asked us for contacts inside but also found a contact that she had on LinkedIn. And here's why you want to find people. 
what people do is you have to understand that you're applying to an applicant tracking system software, which more often than not is storing you in the cyberspace file cabinet or garbage can. You're in there uh, hoping, praying uh, that your resume is going to get found. This is based on keywords and functions, stuff like that. But if you have someone you know that can talk to HR or a hiring authority, they can pull you out of there. Different studies and surveys, and even when I do hiring, if I have recommendations from people I trust, that person, that job seeker candidate, automatically is going to be included in the mix. Automatically. I've had people in my workshops that I told them, I recommend, you know, if you're interested, I have an open position, please apply. Because as soon as the break is, or uh, the workshop's over, I'm calling HR and, and telling them, please look for this lady's or this man's resume. If you uh, are referred, you stand 80 to 90% chance of being interviewed and your chances of getting hired are significantly increased. All right, and, and that's why you wanna find people. Jobs, eh, jobs are like fitting, you know, square peg in a round hole. Um, look for opportunities. That's the other thing I would say is, what are you good at? What type of problem solver? What type of problems do you tackle? Uh, read uh, Cranes or the Business Ledger. Uh, they tell you what companies are coming to town, which ones are expanding, which ones are developing new products, um, what problems need to be solved in the community. Because those are where opportunities are. And they usually mention companies that are working on them. Anyone else? Okay. Well, please put some more comments in here. Uh, okay. I am going to try to figure out why. Oh, by the way. All the uh, models I painted, uh, everything everything in here I painted and put together. See, this is how I incorporate my hobby and my work. Uh, I am trying to figure out Jennifer, Javon, can you figure out why I can't uh, post and chat? Okay, meanwhile, we do have a survey uh, that we send out occasionally. Please uh, take your survey. It lets us know when, uh, uh, how we're doing, what services we can provide. Today, Please look at, uh, this is uh, how you contact your counselor and maintain monthly contact. Uh, email your counselor and say, uh, this is the code, golden302. Uh, I am going to put it in here. That is the code that you email to your counselors, okay? And that lets them know that you attended today. Uh, please let us know when you when you get jobs. Uh, we just had uh, someone get three job offers. Uh, Susanna, she attended uh, a lot of our Wednesday workshops uh, that you have to uh, be approved for the grant to attend and almost all of our job clubs. And uh, she was very diligent and she had three job offers, two in Wisconsin, which is where she was at, and one in Pennsylvania. Uh, one was, uh, I think, multicultural uh, standards that was in Pennsylvania, six figures, uh, but she liked the one in Wisconsin better. 
Uh, she had two there. They were all healthcare industry related. Okay. Look, just bear with me here. I want to get this out here for you. 